This section is intended to be just sort of a quick review of simplifying radicals and dealing with uh, radical um, operations. There we go. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division of radicals. If uh, you don't feel very comfortable with radicals or if you haven't dealt with them much before, you'll find a more comprehensive lesson on that at the address down below here, uh, ck12.org slash section slash radicals, where there's a, a lot more in-depth uh, review of each of the steps that I'm going to go over really quickly here. Uh, basically, though, when you are adding or subtracting radicals, they can only be combined if you have the same number under the root. So if I have uh, three roots of 7 added to four roots of 7, I can go ahead and combine those into 7 roots of 7 because the number under the root is the same in both of my numbers. If I have um, four roots of 6, added to four roots of three, then I can't do anything with them. There's there's no change because I can't combine these two different numbers. These aren't the same here and here with the number under the root. And it works the same way for subtraction. Um, you can, and we'll kind of go come back into this a little bit, just a little bit uh, in a minute, but if you can convert the numbers underneath the root so that they are both the same, then you can combine them, and that's part of the simplifying process we'll get to again in just a second. For multiplication, it doesn't matter. For multiplication, uh, we just take the number outside and the number inside and multiply them by the other number outside and inside. So if I have three roots of five times two roots of six, these, all four of these numbers are different, but I just multiply my whole numbers, 3 times 2, which gives me 6. And then I multiply my roots, root 5 times root 6 would be root 30. Then if I can simplify the root of 30, I do so. If I can't simplify the root of 30, then I just leave my answer as this in its final form. And then for division, for division, we just have to get the radical out of the denominator. Um, so if we have, uh, say, 3 roots of 2 over 2 roots of 3, yeah, we have to simplify this by taking the root symbol and getting it out of the denominator of the fraction. To do that, we just multiply top and bottom of the fraction by that same root. So if I multiply this whole fraction by root 3 over root 3, then I'm essentially multiplying it by 1, right? Anything divided by itself is 1, so I'm not going to change the value of the fraction at all. And then if I have 2 roots of 3 times root of 3 on the bottom, then what I have is 2 times root 3 times root 3, which is the same thing as saying 2 times the root of 3 squared. And a square and a square root are opposite, so they end up canceling each other out and I end up with just 6 on the bottom. So then my denominator is a whole number, and on top I end up with 3 roots of 2 times root 3, so 3 times root 2 times root 3, and just like we saw up here with the multiplication, I just multiply the numbers and the roots together, and that gives me 3 roots of 6. So then my simplified version of that initial fraction would be 3 roots of 6. If your outside numbers will cancel, which they do here, and I should have checked before I said act like it was done, then obviously we should do so. 3 goes into 3 once and into 6 twice, so I'd end up with just root 6 over 2, and that would be my truly simplified version of this initial division. And then finally, the other thing we want to go over here real quick is actually just simplifying roots where we take the number under a root and then see if there's a way to break it up into something that we can get a root of. So for instance, if we were to take the root of 50, the root of 50 is not an even number because the root of 49 is 7, so it's just barely more than 7. So really we can't actually come up with a single digit for this. However, we do know that 50 is the same thing as 25 times 2. So the root of 50 would be the same thing as the root of 25 times 2. Now that we can do something with, because we know the root of 25. So we could take 25 out of the square root and put it outside in front of it. That gives us the square root of 25 is 5, so we have a 5 outside and the 2 left inside because we couldn't do anything about that square root of 2. Now that also allows us to sort of get around our initial restriction on adding and subtracting radicals. Because for instance, we can't add or subtract the root of 50 and the root of 32.
But what we can do is rewrite root 50 as the square root of 2 times 25 and square root of 32 as the root of 2 times 16. Then we can pull the 25 out as a 5, and that gives us 5 roots of 2. And we pull the 16 out as a 4, because square root of 16 is 4. That gives us 4 roots of 2. Now we can combine them, because now they have the same square root. 5 roots of 2 plus 4 roots of 2 is 9 roots of 2. So we found a way to take two numbers that otherwise couldn't be combined because they're different roots and combine them very cleanly just because we simplified them each so that they had the same number under the square root symbol.